Thanks for tuning in to Talk It Out with Pratika Karkwal, a place to hear stories, experiences, and impact in the field of mentoring and mental health. These two are one of the most important causes for today's youth. I'm your host, Pratika Karkwal, a current high schooler who is a passionate advocate for these causes and is here to provide you with a place to hear and learn from the inspiring experiences of our guests. We have here with us today, Katherine Robinson, VP or Vice President of Programs at Step Up, a mentorship nonprofit providing the structure for girls and those who identify with girlhood to define their ideal destination and get there. Now, a very cool fact about Step Up is that this past year, they expanded to Nashville, Tennessee, with the support of award-winning actress, entrepreneur, producer, and New York Times bestselling author Reese Witherspoon. Yes, the one in Legally Blonde, for those who are fans. <laughs> so Step Up is definitely expanding and spreading to the community so they can have a positive impact on mentoring. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us here today. We're excited to dive deeper into mentoring with you. So let's get to know a little bit more about our guest. Catherine, can you give us a little intro on yourself, your education, early career, and how you decided you wanted to be a part of Step Up? Sure. First of all, thank you, Pratika, for having me. And i um, so glad to be able to speak to um, you and your listeners. Um, so my path to step up wasn't a straight one. Um, I attended Spelman College, which is a historically black women's college, um, majored in sociology and uh, minored in management and organization. And my intent was to go to business school, get my MBA and make a lot of money. But um, my senior year at Spelman, I won a fellowship um, to Babson College's business school. Um, but because I didn't have any substantive work experience, like I'd had summer jobs, but nothing like mm -hmm. real, a real professional job. I had to work a year before starting their two year MBA program. So Babson helped me to find a um, job working as an account service rep for a large information technology company up in Massachusetts. Um, and I was in their cellular billing division. And, you know, it's often said that without struggle, there's no growth. Well, let's just say that I had a lot of growth that year because there was also a lot of struggle that year. I had zero interest in information technology or cellular billing. And it was my job to be the go-between between, between our customer, which was the cellular phone company, and our engineers who actually built and helped maintain the computer code that created that cell phone company's phone bills. So an error in the computer code could cost that company like thousands of dollars. So very high stakes, very intense as I navigated trying to please the customer and coax the engineers to take care of the issues. I'll just say I cried several times in the bathroom at work that year. It was a tough year. The one bright spot for me was the fact that our company allowed us to volunteer in the community. Um, and I chose to volunteer by mentoring a second grader at the local elementary school. And I loved going to that school. It was like a lifesaver for me. Um, so much so that I expanded beyond just mentoring that second grader and just started um, volunteering to help out with the entire class. The teacher and I became friends. And I think it was really that um, which led me to give up my MBA fellowship. And I went into teaching. I went back to my home state of Texas, got my alternative teaching certificate, um, where I went on to teach second grade. I taught second grade for seven years total, five in Texas and two in Louisiana before going to get my um, master's in education. Um, and from there, I held a variety of positions in nonprofit leadership in the K-12 education space. I worked in designing, developing, delivering um, academic interventions, family engagement interventions, socio-emotional, out-of-school time, all types of interventions and programming in schools really across the country. I found out about Step Up when one of my former colleagues reached out to me about the position, um, recommended I check it out. I did. I immediately loved the mission of the organization, um, felt like like all the roles that I had been doing in the years leading up to it really 
had prepared me to have this position. I interviewed for the role. Um, the rest is history. I've been with Step Up now for a little bit over a year. I'm still in love with the mission, the work, really excited to help the organization scale up and provide mentoring opportunities to an even greater number of teens and young adults. Like you said, we um, expanded to Nashville and we are continuing, to, we'll be continuing to expand in the years to come. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I loved how you talked about, you know, Step Up. Obviously, they're growing a lot in our community. And then you also talked about, you know, your career path. You started off with sociology and management. And then, right, you wanted to go. You thought you would go into business. And then, you know, I liked how you talked about without struggle, there's no growth. Maybe if you didn't struggle in that, you know, business um, you know, career you were pursuing, then you would have never found like your love and passion for this mentorship, you know, mission that you talked about that Step Up is, you know, follows. And that's why you really are, you know, so connected with Step Up. And then, right, how you talked about you're exploring your passions, you first tried out business, you know, it just wasn't for you. But then later, that helped you find your true passion, right? After that tough year, you really found that you enjoyed mentoring and volunteering. And then that second grader, that mentorship experience really they just allowed you to keep Snowball. on mentoring. Right? Yep. Yep, yep, for sure. So I liked how you share that because I know that definitely, you know, exploring your passions and at the end, you found your passion for mentoring. And that didn't, that wasn't something you maybe originally thought of, but then right. later on, right? Yeah. A lot of times the first thing that you think you're going to do, just it, it isn't. It isn't. And that's okay. Like, it's okay. If you think this is the career for you, you try it out. It's okay to say, you know what? I was wrong. Let me go a different route. So a lot of people do that. Yeah. That's especially relevant. I think for us youth, because we go in thinking, you know, we're going to do this like 10 years from now, but at the end of the day, you, like you really don't know, right? Maybe many years from now, you'll explore something else and like it better. So I think it's better to just keep exploring and finding out what you really, you know, find happiness and joy in. Like you found it in mentoring and, um, you know, being a part of Step Ups. I think that's really inspiring for us. So um, now like moving a bit, you know, into we talking about mentoring a little deeper into that. So Catherine, what is mentoring in your own words and what has been Step Ups impact in mentoring? Sure. So to me, mentoring is really that connection between the mentor and the mentee, and it positively impacts them both. So like for the mentor, it is um, providing with them the opportunity to be of service. It can also serve as a learning opportunity for them as well. So like as a mentor of that second grader, I learned some things as well. I learned um, that that was really what I was truly interested in. Um, for the mentee, it provides them with a guide to support them in their pursuits, whether that be, you know, for school, work, or even personally. Um, in terms of the impact Step Up has had in mentoring, um, we've had some really great success. Like, I'm proud to say that we've had a powerful impact in mentoring. Across our programs this past school year, we reached over 1,000 teens and young adults. And our most recent impact data um, showed that participants had experienced 85% growth in confidence, 85% growth in their self awareness, um, leading them to be able to feel more connected with themselves and with their community, um, and 89% growth in their skills, leading them to be more career ready. And that's really just the start, because by 2025, we aim to reach up to 2,500 teens annually through our programming and 500 Step Up Young Adults with um, tools, resources, and um, just a network to help them be successful in college and career. Mm -hmm. So I like how you talked about that really like connect with mentoring and um, a mentor and a mentee, right? Like how, you know, both learn from each other. You learn from that second grader because, you know, there's always a lot we can learn from, you know, different people. And I think that's really important how, you know, mentor and as a mentor, you're being of service to the mentee. You're learning so much about, you know, especially for youth mentoring, you're learning a lot about how youth work and, you know, how they think. And you're able to really guide them based on your own experiences as a mentor, right? And then as a mentee, you're being guided in your to get to your, you know, passion and really achieve your goals. And um, what you talked about with Step Up is really, you know, a big example of the power of mentoring, right? You talked about how there's a growth in confidence and self-awareness. And most importantly, it's allowing, you know, young 
people to be ready for their career, be career oriented through tools and network. And I think that's so important as, you know, mentoring. And I think that's, you know, important as we advocate for youth mentoring, how different youth are getting the opportunities to have, you know, these resources so that they can, you know, in the future, find their passion and really achieve it. Um, so now, Catherine, we want to know your story. So share with us your story when it comes to getting support from a mentor. Did you have a mentor who guided you or made you passionate about this cause? So I didn't have like a mentor through a formal mentoring program like Step Up. I've had what would be called like a natural mentor. Those are the mentors that just come about in your life naturally, whether it be like family or work or church or some community organization. Um, my biggest mentor would be my mother. She's a retired high school English teacher um, um, and she taught middle school as well, taught for over 30 years. She was actually my ninth grade English teacher as well. That was very interesting. That was fun. <laughs> Um, and I witnessed her mentor countless number of students throughout the years. Like she was a teacher, you know, since my childhood. I mean, it really had a huge impact on me. I was the one typically tagging along as she exposed students in our rural um, area. Like I grew up in a very rural area of Texas um, to the arts she took them to the theater, ballet, operas. We visited college campuses. And mind you, these were efforts that weren't a part of her teaching duties. This was just, she saw the need. She knew the, um, the young people in our community needed exposure. We lived about an hour, hour and a half um, outside of Houston, but many of them had never even gone to Houston. So um, she saw the need and she just filled it. So that was probably my biggest mentor. Um, and another natural mentor for me was my principal at my very first teaching assignment. She was excellent at mentoring her teachers, providing us opportunities to like develop our professional skills, um, encouraging us to take um, advantage of leadership opportunities um, within the district. She even personally would like um, bring in retire um, like a retirement account advisors and like you know, try and encourage us to get ourselves set up for retirement. So she helped us both professionally and personally. Um, and even after we both left the school, we've remained in touch. Like we don't have a set schedule to talk. Um, we don't even talk often, but, you know, I know I've got her cell phone. I can text her and get in contact with her. And I know she will be willing and able to provide um, the advice and guidance I need for me. Mm -hmm. I love that you talked about, you know, like sometimes the very powerful, impactful mentors are not always those like through a formal network, right? Sometimes there's just those people who you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, but they make such like a, you know, profounding impact on your life, right? For example, for you, you talked about your mother being your mentor, right? You know, she really shaped you as an individual. Maybe that's you know, that is what made you really passionate about pursuing this mentoring field, right? Maybe like, you know, having her as a mentor just gave you that you know, vision in mind that this is what I want to do, right? And then I love that you said a mentor doesn't need like that, you know, they don't need an initiative that you can do it on their own. Like your mother, she didn't need, you know, school to tell, hey, take the kids out to see these different things, right? She did it on her mm -hmm. own. She saw the need and you said, as, as you said, she filled the need, right? Um, right? She didn't need the initiative. I think she took it. And that's, that's really the sign of a, one of the most powerful mentors, right? In, in your life and, you know, in youth's lives, those who are willing to do extra things to really make an impact on your life. And that's probably, you know, one of the major things that shaped you. And I, you talked about your principle, right? You don't need to talk on an everyday basis, but there's that connection, right? right that stays between you and your principal and that, that won't go away, right? Because um, they helped you a lot as a youth, you know, as a young woman. So I think that's really powerful what you talked about you know mentoring doesn't have to be formally done it can just be a very powerful connection you form with people you meet on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. so do you have any real life stories to share with our listeners on how mentoring has positively affected youth like a specific example of whether it's be someone you've worked with through step up or anybody else you know you've mentored 
Sure. Um, I'd love to tell you all about this young lady who I originally started working with at my former job, um, which is a, a local community development organization. And through that organization, we offered a variety of out of school time programs mm -hmm. for um, high schoolers. They could earn industry based experience and credentials. And I'll just, I'll call this young lady, Anna. So um, Anna joined one of our programs after her mother really pleaded her case um, for entry. Her GPA was very low, lower than our requirements for entry. But after speaking with her mom and Anna herself, I kind of learned about some of the hardships that she had mm -hmm. gone through. She had just moved to the community. Um, she was trying to turn things around. And I, I felt like she was up to the challenge of the program, that she would commit to it and that she wasn't um, going to um, not give her all to it. So I accepted her into the program and she blossomed. Um, she was new to the city, like I said, so she was able to build like a community of like-minded peers through the program. And she also went up to uh, went ahead to bring up her GPA at her new school. Mm -hmm. uh, we kept in contact um, after the completion of her program. She took the initiative to send me emails to let me know how she was doing in school. Um, I also met with her and her mom um, to kind of prep them for the college admissions process, mm -hmm. you know, because she had had such a low GPA her freshman year, she knew she was going to need to kind of address that. Um, and so I kind of talked with them um, through some strategies that they could use. Um, she went on to serve as our youth representative on mm. our advisory board. She earned an internship supporting some of our elementary school out of school time programs. So that allowed me to mentor her, um, not just about college admissions, but just about how to navigate the workforce and how to be a professional and how to show up, you know, at these out of school time programs for our elementary um, school students. Um, she got accepted into college. Um, she's going to be a junior in the fall. And the best part is that she's now started participating in Step Up Young Adult programs. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, we don't talk on a consistent basis again, but I feel like she's comfortable with just like reaching out to me when she needs the support, which again, kind of like me and my principal, I think she knows I'll be there if I have any like resources that come across my desk, you know, because I know what she's looking mm -hmm. to go into as in terms of a career, I'll shoot her a text or an email with those resources and she'll reach out to me if she has needs. Um, so kind of have that relationship now. I, I loved how you talked about, you really understood her. You, um, I think you just showed one of the most important parts in a mentorship relationship and that's trust, right? You trusted mm -hmm. her that, you know, she had a low GP at that time. You could have easily said, no, like, you know, this isn't meeting our minimum requirements. But one of the major things you did is you, you believed in her. And if you maybe hadn't given her all those opportunities, um, you maybe, she, you know, she wasn't going to yeah. be here where she is now. Right. So if you, you trusted her and, you know, you really built a strong relationship, that mentor mentee relationship, right. You gave her a network to be a part of, and, you know, you didn't really have the incentive to help in college admissions, but you did all that. You yeah. helped in college admissions, navigating the workforce. You did that on your own. And I think that's, again, the sign of a powerful uh, mentor. I think you did exactly what your mom did right she told she, she right fill the need <laughs> yes fill the need you didn't have any incentive you did that on your own and I think that's so important um for a mentor and a mentee relationship your mentee's now successful right she's a junior in college she will obviously be very successful in the workforce and of course as you said that connection still remains she trusts you she can reach out to you whenever she needs guidance you don't need to you know be on a call every day she just knows that when she's in a time in life where she needs your help, she, she knows she can always, you know, count on you, call you because you have that really strong foundation of trust, right? I think that's really important, um, you know, that you talked about trust. I think that's, yeah. that's quite inspiring. So can you tell us a bit about the progress we've seen in society when it comes to mentoring and how we can further improve as a society in terms of mentoring advocacy? Sure. So I know you're aware of the National Mentoring Organization Mentor, yes. right? Since you were honored at their annual conference as this year's um, Excellence in Mentoring honoree. So congratulations to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
For those who aren't familiar with um, Mentor, it's an organization that really works to like build and expand the um, youth mentoring field and is very well respected organization regarding quality mentoring. So actually this year they released some research on um, this very question that you're asking mm -hmm. um, in their Who Mentored You study. It examines the role of mentors in the lives of Americans over the last half century. So just, I'm not going to go through it all, but just a few headlines on the progress. There have been major increases in mentoring relationships over the last 30 years, and Americans attribute much of their success in life to their mentors. So a few um, interesting statistics from the report I'll share. Um, the growth in mentoring has actually been through program provided mentors. Like I had a lot of natural mentors, but um, today's young adult is three times more likely than a baby boomer to say they were mentored through a program, programs like Step Up. Um, mentoring programs are increasingly reaching youth who have experienced a um, high number of adverse life experiences like abuse, running away, food insecurity. They're also um, among today's youth and youth of color and mar other marginalized communities, they're reporting some of the highest rates of mentoring. Mm -hmm. So there's greater equitable access to mentors across socioeconomic lines. Um, youth of color and youth from lower income levels um, and who've experienced hardships are most likely to give um, their mentors credit for their success in life. Um, and there's strong correlations between um, them receiving that mentoring during childhood and an increased sense of belonging and stronger mental health. And finally, um, they're also finding correlations that suggest mentoring can support upward mobility for those youth that are um, in lower income brackets. So lots of great things about um, the increases that we're seeing in mentoring. Unfortunately, though, um, the report also talks about um, today's youth experiencing a mentoring gap. So all the youth who actually want a mentor are not being able to receive a mentor. And so in terms of a pathway forward to help improve mentoring advocacy, one of the things the mentor organization recommended was fostering a mentoring mindset in many, um, in as many American adults as possible. So here at Step Up, one of the ways we kind of seek to help cultivate that mindset mm -hmm. is by breaking down the notion that mentoring requires a huge time commitment. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, when they think about mentoring, think of the more uh, long-term relationship-focused mentoring that's like yeah. you've got to commit to six months or a year of mentoring with one person. Yeah. Well, at Step Up, we provide a lot of more short-term um, mentoring opportunities for our yes. young people to experience a, a wide variety of mentors. Mm -hmm. So we feel like if more people understood that you can mentor for shorter periods of time, um, that they would feel like it was more doable. They'd be more white, likely mm -hmm. to, yeah. to actually reach out and mentor, um, even for those with really busy schedules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I loved how you talked about, right? Like, I know we talked about how a lot of the times mentors don't have to be through a formal pro program. But I do agree that oftentimes having a mentor through some sort of program, whether it be Step Up or a mentor, a national organization, right? I think that that does give youth a lot of times, a, a lot of the times a platform because right. sometimes it's hard. Not all youth have access to those day-to-day -day interactions where they can trust, you know, exactly. they have trusted people around them. So a lot of the times it helps if, you know, sometimes they're not in the best communities where they can find trusted adults, right? You talked about how tr trust is an important foundation for the mentor-mentee relationship. So, you know, a lot of the times programs give that platform for you to connect with mentors who they can really trust and they're right. through a trusted platform, right? They've been vetted, yes. Yes, yes. And um, you talked about a lot of times in the recent times, there's been, you know, people who are youth who had adverse life experiences, they've been overcome through the support of a mentor, right? A lot of the times mentees credit their mentor for their success, their upward mobility. As you talked about, 
a lot of the times mentors give career ready um, resources and tools. And so that really does allow mentees, right? A lot of the times they may not have that support and guidance at their home or in their communities, but a mentor can really help them, whether it be with college admissions as you did, whether it be with, you know, mm -hmm. getting, being familiar with the workforce. I think you also did that. So I think that's yeah. really a wonderful way to help with upward mobility. And then you talked about the mentoring gap. So fostering that mentorship mindset, right? You don't have to have a big time commitment. It's not like you have to dedicate hours and hours. It's really that relationship of trust, which you would foster, right? A lot of the times right. mentoring is just listening to your mentee. So it's not a lot of times a big time commitment. You just need to guide them. And um, right, you talked about um, the importance of that mentorship gap, which we need to decrease, right? We need to make sure right. that people get out that stigma associated with, oh, mentoring is a big time commitment because that's not necessarily true. Um, like you said, you know, you don't always have to call your mentor every single day. It just, they need to count on you whenever they're in a time where they need guidance, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So Catherine, do you have any final notes to share with our listeners in regards to mentoring or anything to add on? Sure. Just a few things. Mm -hmm. You know, there is that mentoring gap out there. One in three young people grow up without a mentor. So I think my final words would be like, if you're in the position to become a mentor to a young person in your life, whether as a natural mentor, like we talked about, or through a more formal program, I encourage you to do so. It doesn't have to be a huge lift. And if you're a teen girl or young woman, or you identify with girlhood or womanhood, you're within the ages of 14 to 29, I encourage you to go ahead and take action and connect with us here at Step Up. We have a variety of ways for you to receive free mentoring supports from our mentors that, help, that can help um, guide you on your path to success. Thank you so much for sharing with that, um, Catherine. I I, that statistic you shared, right? One in three youth or one in three individuals don't have a mentor. So first, you know, first off, don't be scared to be a mentor. It's not always a big time commitment. It's just, you need to really a theme of today's conversation has been established that, um, you know, really big idea of trust, right? Make yes. sure that you can trust each other. You believe in your mentee. If you do that, it's not a big time commitment. It's really just a matter of, can you connect with your mentee? That Right. connection, I think is more important than the time commitment. You can find a mentor through natural means or through a program, whether it be through step up, whether it be through a mentor or the national organization, there's a lot of ways which you can connect with wonderful platforms, wonderful mentors. You just need to make sure that if you need one, you're looking for them and you're making sure that you do have um, that guidance because that's very important for youth. So that wraps up today's very interesting session with Catherine Robinson from Step Up. We're so grateful for you giving your time to us today, Catherine. Thank you so much. For our listeners, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe to Talk It Out with Pratika Karkwal for more content like this. And please feel free to share your topic request and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you.